Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Hello and welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Terror camps reactivated in Balakot, says Indian Army Chief. Al-Qaeda trained by Pakistan military and ISI admits Imran Khan. Experts at UNHRC consider terrorism financing as main concern for security in South Asia. An Afghan vote mired in Taliban attack warnings. The Indian military and various state security agencies across India are on high alert as a major infiltration plan is being worked out in Pakistan to launch terror attacks in India. Several inputs conveyed by Indian intelligence agencies to the government reveal that terror launch pads of jesh e Muhammad terror group in Balakot have reactivated and around 500 terrorists from Balakot are ready to infiltrate into India, a report. India is on high alert after intelligence inputs issued warning of a terror plan to target major military and air force installations of India. The threat has also been called upon the leading political personalities of India, including Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The alert came just few days after Indian Army Chief General Bipin Rawat informed that terror group Jaish e Mohammed's camp in Balakot have been reactivated. The Army Chief also revealed that along with Balakot, the terror camps are also active around the line of control and about 500 terrorists are waiting to infiltrate into India. Balakot has been reactivated. You see, these numbers keep fluctuating, but I would say yes, there are at least 500 people who are waiting to infiltrate. That is the minimum number, I would say, but these numbers keep fluctuating because depending on how the weather pattern is and they keep moving. Now, you see, what's happening is as uh, you know, the snowfalls have melted, the ice has melted, the shift has taken place towards the northern part of, uh, of GNP, you know, towards Gurez, Andalwan, those areas are getting activated. Now, as the temperature keeps falling and, and the snow starts coming in, they start coming in to areas which are less snowbound. So, these figures keep fluctuating where the terrorists are. Pakistanis also attempt, you know, infiltrating from various areas where they find that they are, they are likely to get success, they push them into those areas. Pakistan remains a country which is sponsoring terrorism and as he himself admitted just a few, uh, few days ago that something like 4,000 to 5,000 terrorists are there in all of Pakistan and that the Balakot region which was destroyed by the Indian Air Force only a few weeks ago have once again been reactivated. India must be on alert and this was a call by the army chief not only to India that we are well prepared and we are alert to deal with the situation as it develops, but also a message to the world that these are the possible course of action that Pakistan is planning to undertake now, undertake once again terrorist activities against its neighbours. According to inputs received by the Indian Defence Ministry and intelligence agencies, the Pakistan-based terror group Jaish e Mohammed has been plotting a suicide attack on Indian air bases. Pakistan origin drones dropping heavy arms and ammunition in Punjab have alarmed security agencies, not just in the border state but also in the national capital New Delhi. Intelligence inputs suggest that terror outfits such as Jaish e Mohammed and Lashkar e Toiba can use unmanned aerial vehicles or drones provided by Pakistan's military to drop payloads and carry bombings targeting crowded areas, dignitaries and vital installations. Despite all the world pressure that is being put on them, despite the fact that they are, they, uh, the FATF blacklist awaits them uh, in a month or so, even then they are not stopping with their terrorist actions. Uh, whether this is the ploy to, um, uh, for the home base uh, to, to keep their own people uh, informed that they are taking some action on Kashmir or otherwise uh, is, is not known. 
But uh, as, a, as a matter of policy, I think what Pakistan is doing is something very mm-hmm. negative and it will have very serious consequences on them. Imran Khan ne khun, khud kash, uh, America mein kaha tha, ki 42,000 atang ki usne train karke rakha hua hai. To us, oh, khali mandir mein jane ke liye to nahi rakha hai. Atang karne ke liye rakha hai, pehli baat. Dusri baat ye hai, ki ek coward desh, jiske paas coward army hai, jo Hindustan ki fauj ka saamna battlefield mein nahi kar sakta, uske paas do hi vikalp hai. Pehla jihad, aur dusra propaganda. आप तीसरा चीज बता दो जो पाकिस्तान करता है जिहाद और प्रोपेगेंडा बस यही उसका उसकी रणनीति है यही उसका स्ट्रेटजी है तो सवाल यह है कि मुजफ्फराबाद कोटली में जो पाकिस्तान की आर्मी ट्रेनिंग सेंटर खोल रखी है जहां पे इन आतंकवादियों की ट्रेनिंग होती है चार दौराए दौराए में दौर में ये लास्ट दौर जो होता है दौराए खास होता है उसके बाद ट्रेनिंग करके इनको घुसपैठी के रूप में हिंदुस्तान के अंदर भेजा जाता है Even though regular terror activities are being reported from various regions of Pakistan, the country still at various occasions has expressed its desire to hold talks with India, having known that India remains stern on its position that talks and terror can't go together. Highlighting India's persistent stand on terrorism, Indian External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar in an event in New York said that India has no problem in talking to Pakistan but it cannot do so with terroristan india obviously could have talked to pakistan and uh, there is no problem uh, talking to pakistan provided pakistan make sure that it it stops all terrorist activities stops the link with terror and uh, uh, stop being uh, termed as a ter- um, um, uh, terroristan basically what uh, our leaders are saying is that pakistan must come clean and discuss them on the table without any uh, you know uh, you know weight added to them if they are going to resort to terrorism then we have no need to talk to them terror groups in pakistan have been planning a strike in india since the abrogation of article 370 from jammu and kashmir moreover their morale has reached an all time high from the time Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan inflamed jihadist forces to launch war against India for Kashmir. After admitting about the presence of 30 to 40,000 terrorists in Pakistan occupied Kashmir, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has once again spilled the beans about trainers and sponsors of dreaded terror group Al Qaeda. In a continuation with a series of confessions in the United States, Imran Khan admitted that Pakistan Army and its powerful inter-services intelligence spy agency had trained Al Qaeda and other groups in Afghanistan. The admission has come after Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and US President Donald Trump vowed to fight against radical Islamic terrorism in an event in Houston, a report. In one of the biggest admissions by Pakistan on terrorism, Prime Minister Imran Khan acknowledged that the country had trained terrorists belonging to Al Qaeda, the group responsible for the 9/11 terror attacks. Pakistan committed one of the biggest blunders by joining the US-led war on terrorism after the September 2001 terror attacks, Khan also said at an event at the Council on Foreign Relations in New York. The Pakistani army isi trained al qaeda and all these groups to fight uh, in afghanistan there were always links between pak they had to be links because they trained them imran khan made this statement during his visit to new york to attend the united nations general assembly meeting scheduled to be held on 27th september Indian Prime Minister Modi arrived before Imran Khan in the US and attended a grand howdy Modi event where he was joined by US President Donald Trump. Modi and Trump took sharp digs on Pakistan as they covertly condemned the South Asian nation for sponsoring terrorism. Samay aa gaya hai ki aatankwad ke khilaf और आतंकवाद को बढ़ावा देने वालों के खिलाफ निर्णायक लड़ाई लड़ी जाए मैं यहां पर जोर देकर कहना चाहूंगा कि इस लड़ाई में प्रेसिडेंट ट्रंप पूरी मजबूती के साथ 
आतंक के खिलाफ खड़े हुए हैं Today we honor all of the brave American and Indian military service members who work together to safeguard our freedom. We stand proudly in defense of liberty and we are committed to protecting innocent civilians from the threat of radical Islamic terrorism. Pakistan a pseudo democracy is ruled by its military since its inception therefore imran khan's comments may anger the military because the security apparatus has in the past angrily rejected politicians openly linking military with terror groups at a time when pakistan is due to face proceedings in fatf's upcoming plenary session in paris Various experts deliberating upon matter of terrorism in UN Human Rights Commission are reflecting upon Pakistan's role in funding of terror groups in South Asia. Terrorism financing has emerged as a big challenge in controlling terror activities. Therefore, various monetary institutions and countries across the world have pulled their hands out from supporting Pakistan financially. We have a report. Experts have shown concern over terrorism financing by state and non-state actors in South Asia, especially from Pakistan, for security in the region and rest of the world. Research scholars from Europe and UK were speaking at a side event titled Terrorism Financing in South Asia, which was organized by the European Foundation for South Asian Studies at UN during the 42nd session of Human Rights Council in Geneva this week. Dr. Paul Stott, a research fellow at Henry Jackson Society, laid emphasis on how money is flowing from South Asia, particularly Pakistan to Europe and UK and then used for terrorist activities in India. Well, historically Pakistan has um had a real problem in this issue. Uh and it was always going to be one of the challenges that Imran Khan would face. Um I'm not sure he's got an enormous amount of room to wriggle because of the pressure on him internally from for example the intelligence services. So it's it's a question really for the international authorities I think to try and deal with Pakistan. And so I think we probably do need to move from that grey list to the black list. There's a list of terrorist actors on Pakistani territory who really do need to be either prosecuted properly in Pakistan or sent to India uh for for trial and um that can't come soon enough really that really is a i think a a basic point for countries dealing with Pakistan in the international arena and indeed for the big NGOs like the United Nations we we do need action now Malai Zdod, former chief of staff of Afghanistan's president Ashraf Ghani and a scholar of Bergov Foundation, deliberated upon the threats posed by terror financing in South Asia, especially in Afghanistan. Malai further went on to expose Pakistan on its malicious endeavor in Afghanistan through Taliban. The insurgency would not be on the level it is without terrorism financing. right from the onset of insurgency you had the taliban um, who were basically madrasa students and these madrasas have financial support not only from the gulf states and individuals within the gulf states uh, but also small donations are collected by these madrasas so from there it started and now obviously they are involved in criminal activity um, they are involved in petty crimes uh, and all their operations are funded in cash if there is no cash they cannot um conduct these spectacular attacks both in the cities and also frontal wars in in the rural areas they call them they are the strategic assets of pakistan pakistan is the main sponsor of of the terrorist activities in afghanistan other experts in the panel dr dorothy vandame of university of lovian and matthew garrot from university of sussex also shows their concerns about terrorism financing from south asia as a major concern for security and peace in the region 
The war on Afghanistan is in a run-up to presidential election on 28th of September. An estimated 9.6 million registered voters are expected to exercise their franchise if the voting proceeds in a peaceful manner. It is also no secret that the Taliban terrorists have proclaimed to disrupt the election process after U.S. Taliban peace talks snapped. A few days ago, 40 civilians were killed in crossfire between terrorists and the Afghan security forces. The incident has instilled fear among Afghan civilians who believe the vote Saturday could witness heightened attacks from Taliban. We have a report. Afghanistan's some 9.6 million registered voters would go to the polls on September 28th. They will be looking for peace, stability and a righteous person to lead the war-torn country. Tens of thousands of soldiers, police and civilians have been killed in the last five years, leaving Afghans wary of endless violence perpetrated by Taliban terrorists. Though election officials say preparations are well in hand, security worries could lead to many to stay at home, potentially undermining the legitimacy of the eventual winner if turnout is too low. The Taliban have made no secret claims of disrupting the elections. The terrorist group have been openly attacking civilians and security forces ever since candidates started holding rallies for the presidential elections. Mr. Said Nomana, some of them with Spence Alas, a Kazukonore, Shahana, Kobola, some of the Garan was on Tahobotia, Saka, Bahotar, Kaziotar, Mantara, Badat, Tolobas, Saka, Unjo and Hobot, Bargazor, Namesha, and Nasha, Tamam Unjo, Borre, Takalubi, Porsha. With a much reduced NATO alliance that mainly focuses on training Afghan forces, government have been struggling to combat a growing Taliban terrorism in the country. Civilians have paid a heavy price in a war that have intensified since U.S. Taliban peace talks collapsed two weeks ago. Following the terror attack incident in which 40 civilians lost lives, a large group of Afghans marched in protest to vent their frustration against the regular attacks perpetrated by Taliban insurgents. On 28 September, Afghans will vote in the country's fourth presidential election since Taliban's ouster in 2001. Twice delayed because of security fears, the election comes amid an intense wave of violence ensued upon collapse of peace talks between the U.S. and the Taliban leaders earlier this month. Many fear Afghanistan's vote on Saturday could be the country's most violent yet. The globally designated terrorist Hafiz Saeed has been approved a monthly expense package by the United Nations Security Council on Pakistan's request. The move has baffled the international community that has been lobbying to put Pakistan under blacklist of FATF. The revelation has also brought to light the double standard Pakistan has been pursuing to safeguard terrorists under the garb of fake crackdown on terror outfits. We have a report. In a baffling revelation, Pakistan had requested the United Nations Security Council demanding the release of monthly expenses for 2008 Mumbai attack mastermind and globally designated terrorist Hafiz Said. The council has recently approved the letter after no objections were raised to it within the set deadline. Pakistan, which has time and again proven to be a safe haven for global terrorists, has based its request before the UNSC by outlining the monthly expenses requirement of Jaman ud Dawa chief. The Pakistan government, the ISA and the army are helping Hafez Saeed and the family in a very major way. Despite that, appealing to the United Nations for giving them 1.5 lakhs a month is something which is clearly indicative of the Pakistani intent in that they intend not taking any action whatsoever against the terrorist groups that are operating from Pakistan. FATF must take note of this. And the fact that the United Nations has accept, accepted it, it's clearly indicative that they haven't understood the essence behind what the 
under the guise of taking out money for helping the Pakistani Hafiz Saeed's family, the money will be misappropriated and misused for anti-Indian activities and for terror financing. Being a proscribed terrorist, Saeed is subjected to comprehensive economic and trade sanctions such as arms embargoes, travel bans and financial or commodity restrictions. Hafiz Saeed, which has been designated as global terrorist by the United States, United Nations and the European Union, is responsible for many terrorist attacks in India, including 26-11 attack in which 166 people were killed. He is also accused of plotting the costly 2001 parliament attack in India. Both India and the US have repeatedly called for justice to be delivered to the victims of the 2008 Mumbai attacks. While the mastermind of the 2008 Mumbai terror attacks was arrested in Pakistan on charges related to terror financing, the Islamabad's recent action of approaching the UN to seek help for Said tells a different story. This is the double standard of Pakistan. On one hand, he is saying that he is controlling terrorism. Otherwise, uh, on ground, things are totally different. Uh, he is uh, helping them out to survive and continue the terrorism. It appears the action taken by the Pakistan to arrest Said was a mere play to save itself from any sanctions by Financial Action Task Force. Pakistan is making weak and fake cases against the proscribed terror outfits, knowing well that they do not have legal standing other than to just make a point with the FATF, which is blatantly misleading as evidenced by the nature of the FIRs being filed against the terror groups and their supporters. The world community then and now has accused Pakistan of providing safe heavens and a sanctuary to carry out terror activities. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Surbhi Sharma signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.